It's been a long journey. And what happens when you pursue God is that you pursue God with nothing. It's just a word from God. You don't have nothing else to pursue God with. You don't have, uh, you don't know the entire mystery of what God has revealed. You just have a word from Him and you pursue Him, all right? So that journey has taken us, wherever it has taken us, but it, it has led us, it has led us to this revelation about the seven days of creation. So I think it was about two and a half months ago, right? That I heard this, this I heard. I heard there's something about receiving insights into the counsel of God. I remember that very clearly. And after that, this, I don't know how this thing popped up about creation, but it, we can get it from the messages. It started with one small revelation. Just something, you know, something tiny that the Lord revealed and then we moved on to where we are now. Now where we are at the moment, we have this entire diagram. So some of the guys, I think it was Paul that was there when I first wrote it, right? And so the one morning I woke up and we got a blank sort of like wall there at home. And I began to write at the top there, day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, six, and seven. And then as I wrote that, then more came, all right? So we know from creation, uh, I'm not going to go to all of it again, because the seven days of creation, God has done what? He has revealed himself and the realm of the spirit in the seven days of creation. Which means anything that we would like to get to know about God is hid in the seven days of creation. You get me? And if you want to know about the realm of the spirit, it is also hid in the seven days of creation. Uh, so you would see, like quite interesting, when, um, when God sort of destroys the earth with, uh, with the flood, that, you know, God does this. He takes one of every single land creature and he puts it in the ark you get me and they come in pairs male and female now why would god do that because he's sticking to his pattern you get me of when we see creation we see something that is locked in the realm of the spirit you remember all of that we spoke about that right so the bible then this entire bible it revolves around the first seven days of creation. Day one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Everything, everything, every life that's recorded here, it has its foundation in the seven days of creation. You're with me? So, we said this. We've got to look at the first man, which is the main man, that's Adam, right? And Eve. And then we also got to look at the lost Adam. So the, the two Adams, do you know who's the last Adam in the Bible? You know who's the last Adam? So Jesus is called the last Adam. So obviously you got a first Adam and you got a last Adam. Now why would you need a last Adam? Why would you need another Adam? For what reason? It's because the first Adam, yes, he made a mistake, he fell. And him himself, he could not rectify that mistake. You're following me? So there was another Adam that was needed to come to rectify what that Adam did, okay? And to restore mankind. So you see the terminology. So, when we look at the life of this first Adam, as we know Christianity, uh, most of what we know about Adam and Eve, their lives are away in which place? You know? In the Garden of Eden. So when I grew up, I always thought, that God, you know, when he made Adam, he made Adam in the Garden of Eden. Did you think that as well? Yes. Most of Anybody thought differently? Adam. And one of the reasons for that is that there is teachings that are passed down in Christianity. That you hear the teaching and you don't take time out to go look at the book. You following me? But you hear the person and to some point, even up until this day, there are some things that I say, and I must correct myself because I have not heard, I've not got it from the Bible. I've heard somebody else say it, and I repeated it. You with me? I'm being honest with you guys. An example is Jacob. My knowledge of Jacob was always what other people said. 
just today I was looking at uh, somebody that I regarded as very spiritual and they have visions and everything they see they see things but when they do the account of Jacob they say he was a supplanter liar fraudster etc but the Bible says that he was a righteous man just as our Job was a righteous man in fact Jacob said to to Laban that hey listen you know I've served you without fault I've taken nothing from you so which means he was a righteous man but because his name means supplanter and deceiver everybody automatically thought that he was actually a supplanter and a deceiver because he was grabbing his brother's heel so they named him that but his life was not a reflection of his name you following me so what God did he changed his name and he gave him the right name which is which is is Israel uh, so you see the, the A-E-L that always means strength or might in the Bible so that one means one, one that is a prince that is mighty before God Israel so God gave him the name according to how he was you follow with me but the way I learned it was from other ministers and what they said and so you got to undo all of that rely on the revelation that God is bringing you with me guys you follow with me so when we come to this type of topic I asked you guys to even check go on the net and check on YouTube did you did anybody check messages around creation so let's start right let's try to get going again. let's try to get going so this is the uh, so this is the revelation that God has brought right you'll find that when God made Adam uh, or rather let's start like this right this is day one on day one what did God do light he said be light right in day two what did he do what is day two but never lights in it. You see, yeah. Yes. The waters from the waters. So there is the family, Shade. It wasn't there. Shade, we gave you pictures. It's all on the wall. Day three, what did God do? And the fruit yielding seed as well, right? Day four, what did God do? Sun, moon, stars, right? Day five, what did he do? The swarms, all right? What does this got to do with? The sea. They, uh, day six, what did God do? Man. Man, and he made beasts and also every creeping thing that creeped upon the earth. And day seven, he rested. So this is, uh, this is God in action, right? Day one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now when you read the Bible, when the Bible says that God rested here, it has sometimes the implication that God did nothing else again. You get me? But yet we know in our lives is God still working. He's still doing what he's doing. Right. So I'm, I'm going to put it together. The right word here to use, the Bible says, and God rested from, from all his work. It's like after he had done his part, obviously he stopped working. You follow me, beloved? That's where God stopped working. So God stopped working here yeah, on the seventh day he stopped. But when he stopped, it was not meant for there to be no work on the earth. You're following me? Because there's still work on the earth. And who's doing the work on the earth? Man, Adam and Eve, they doing the work, all right? So you find that God stops working. You know why he stops working? Because he hands over to somebody else. It's the only reason why he stops working. You get me? When the man falls, guess what happens? Jesus comes and he starts working. Until he restores the man. And once he's restored the man, what does he do? He stops working. And he goes back. So follow me, right? So these are the seven days of creation there. Oh yeah, we all got them. Now, in this is something called revelation. Revelation is when God reveals something about himself. And he opens it up. So when we look at day one of his creation, what we are able to see, not just the natural things that he has made, but we're able to see also the invisible things. So yeah, he specifically says in day one, there is light and darkness. Which means the man Adam, he, in his first day, he has to experience darkness and light because the Bible says, and the evening and the morning were the first day. 
follow me and I'll be happy because at this point in time, there's only one person on the earth. And guess who's that? This is after day seven now, right? We come back to day one. At this point in time, who's on the earth? Is Adam and Eve on the earth? Who's on the earth? Adam, Adam right. Where's the Garden of Eden? It's, it's somewhere on earth that God had made it. Is Adam in it? No, he is not in it, all right? So here's where we find patterns of revelation in the Bible. Which means, God left Adam to experience darkness and light. And we said that when God made man, what did he do afterwards? He went back to his headquarters, which is heaven. And so he left man there. So the first experience man must have is that, on his own, and with his own conscience, he must survive in this environment. You follow me, beloved? That is why in your life and in my life, listen to this, without even the voice, Nisha, of a preacher, you still know right and wrong. Correct. And without the voice of a preacher, God will judge all of us on the basis of just knowing right and wrong. So, yeah, when the Lord reveals some things, it shows that how we up or how we survive in darkness is the first thing we do is that we run from darkness. We depart from darkness, all right? That's on the first day. When we depart from darkness, that's called the fear of the Lord. So, spirit of the fear, that spirit of must come up because the Bible in Isaiah 11 too, says the fear of the Lord. Right. So, you will find that the way God is worded with the Bible, afterwards, everything is spirit of, spirit of. But in the early stages, it's just the fear of the Lord. Because that, the fear of the Lord has got to do with your conscience. No preacher, nobody needs a preacher at this stage over here, right? Nobody needs a preacher at this stage. So Adam was to survive this stage without nobody by his side, right? Just the fear of the Lord. Then, we find then on the earth, remember the earth is a huge expense. It's, imagine Adam is in a massive expense. Do you think at that time there's any produce on the earth? Is there any vegetation on the earth? That time, day two, is there any vegetation on the earth? Has anything brought forth yet on the earth? So, how beautiful that you find the terminology of Christianity is that when we are in darkness, the Bible says we are where? We are in Egypt. So whenever we live a lifestyle of sin, we say, hey, that guy's gone back to Egypt. Is that not right? So we call it Egypt. That's Bible terminology. When the Israelites came out of Egypt, because they were in bondage under them, when they came out of Egypt, God led them through something called the wilderness. So like was with Adam, after his experience of darkness and light change, guess what happens? He has his own wilderness type of experience, which is outside of the garden. How's that? It ties in beautifully with the pattern of how God reveals it. Now, in the wilderness, this wilderness, uh, as it in Hosea, Hosea, eh? Hosea, God says this to the children of Israel. He says that he saw they were, uh, they, were lived, they were going back to a life of Egypt, right? A lifestyle of Egypt. So God says this. What is it, Mr. Norris? I will lure them into the wilderness. So God's, God's way of us getting to know him is to take us in what's called a dry season. You know what's a dry season? Around you, nothing else matters. It's the end of life. There's no life. There's no, you know, there's just nothing that's pleasurable to you. The only thing that you see is just uh, wilderness sort of experiences around you, dryness around you. And when we're in that type of environment, it's ideal for God to begin to work by the spirit of knowledge there. You see that? The spirit of knowledge is when you and I get to know God. You following me? So this is the most important part of, ev of, of any person's journey. The nation of Israel spent how many years in the wilderness? Does anybody know? 40 plus 40. So they spent 80 years just to get to know God and they didn't really know him. Some of them knew him and so God took them uh, into the promised land, came that is uh, right. So the life of Moses, Moses' life, he grew up in Egypt, right? You remember? Then what happened? He had to 
He caused some mess ups there. He killed a man. And he had to flee from Egypt. When he fled from Egypt, where did he flee into? He fled into something called the wilderness. This is where he met his wife. He had two children from Zipporah. And he lived with his father-in-law. And he took care of his father-in-law's animals for how many years? So Moses' wilderness experience was 40 years. Imagine. My wilderness experience was 7 years. Praise God. So with, with regard to you guys, what the Lord has said, it can be seven days, maybe, 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 I'm not too sure about this, maybe seven weeks, seven months, 70 weeks, 70 months, or seven years. So you choose right. So when we did the appointment of leaders, they're all, the three of them are, are under probation, and silently watching him, and they are doing, you know, they are doing quite well. Come a time we will appoint them, but they still need to be tested. Because I'm more in this stage. Most likely, I, I think, I think uh, seven months is the, is the cutoff, for them, right? With regard to this holiness journey. You're following me, beloved. Everybody with me? So it's in this place that you get to know God. When I was in this place, when the Lord taught me this, this is where I had all my spiritual experiences. So Sister Kimon is here now. And in this journey of hers that she's going through, it was only a test that the Lord gives in a short period. You have a lot of visions, eh? True. Sometimes she says that even in the day when she sees somebody, she can see some stuff and things like that. That's beautiful. Because this journey here is where you begin to hear the voice of the Spirit and understand the language of God. You're following me? So how does God communicate to us here in this experience? Bo, how, how is he communicating to you? That one nice long dream that you had. You remember? So Brother Paul says he had a dream. And he was like, he, now I could have helped him to put the dream together. But, you know, we don't make life so easy. We live here. And he keeps on bringing it up. But now the wife gave it away, the wife. The wife just helped him with the whole thing, you see? And so, yeah, is the place where, beloved, God speaks to you. The dreams and visions and also impressions and sometimes an audible voice. This is where you begin to discern and know the voice of God in the wilderness. Because there's nothing else you focus, uh, you focus on. When the Lord began speaking to me, he gave me one dream. You know how long I took to put the thing together, Paul? Maybe about two plus months. Two plus months. I had nobody. I went, I ran for books, I ran for this, I searched the minutes, I did every single thing. I still couldn't put it together. I read a book about 80 pages, another one. I read so many books just to try because nobody ever taught me. Imagine after serving God for 10 years, you don't even know how to put a dream together. 10 years, can't put a dream together. So eventually, I put it together. Then the Lord gave me more, I put it together. More, I put it. Then I just could put the things together. So I began to know the voice of God. So you'll find in the lives of like Joseph and Daniel, it was the interpretation of dreams that promoted them out of the, the wilderness. How did Daniel get out of his wilderness? He interpreted the king's dream. How did Joseph get out of his wilderness? Interpret, interpreted a dream. You get me? So, I'm not saying now, uh, Sir Ramaphosa is going to come and you must interpret a dream for him. It's a pattern, eh? it's a pattern, pattern. So, this is the place where you begin to know the communication of God. Now, you'll find that before Israel got into the wilderness, there was some experience there. How did they, how did they get from the land of Egypt into the wilderness. What did Moses have to do? Can you remember? What did Moses have to do? There was the Red Sea there. Remember, what did Moses do? He parted the sea and they went through. In the Bible, the Bible speaks about the baptism of Moses. You follow me? So, that is why uh, the baptism is still practiced today. Because it represents something. You'd find that in the book of Acts, when there was a baptism of what? The Holy Ghost and fire. And when that happened, what did it bring? They spoke in tongues. 
So they acquired a language that they could communicate with God about things that they themselves can't even understand. You follow me, beloved? And so you and I, when we get baptized, and that's why in the wilderness, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is so important because that is where you begin to have this communication with God. You can express yourself to God. He can talk to you. You can understand him. You follow me, beloved? So that is where now this experience with God becomes so real. God becomes tangible to you. And yes, Sister Mish, this is the place where you must not stop the experiences of the Spirit. There are some, yeah, there's like our brother Paul, he's like, I can't wait for my one, my experience. Then there are others, like Kenneth, that the Lord comes and he wants to take his spirit out of his body and he thought that he's dying. It's too early for him to die. He says, no, I'm not. And he, and he refused to. All right? And so, what will happen there is that you are definitely going to have spiritual experiences. Guaranteed. A dream is a spiritual experience. You know, Sister Terran? Sister Terran is saying in December, right? I don't tell her this, but those dreams that she had, some of them are like in the very sort of throne room of God, from the throne room of God. But I never tell her. This letter... Find a way. Hey, every pastor this. They find a way. We all fight in there. Find locating, locating, right. So it's the communication of God that now listen, beloved. This is not based on your behavior. So she says, she says this, hey, you know what? I don't feel worthy of all these things that are happening to me. For whatever reason. But God still gives her another one. She says that God gives another one. Because this is not based on your worthiness about anything. This is just the growth you will see here as a little child. You get me? Regardless of what you dream, the Lord still pours out His favor on you. One of the things with little children is they must know their sins are forgiven. Which tells me that people fall at this stage. They keep on falling. But God is faithful and He keeps on lifting them up. So this, what happens in this stage is that it develops humility in you. Imagine, what, don't you think it's humbling that Let's say I make a mistake, I make a fall, right? Now, I'm not saying I must go out to sin, but I make a mistake and I sin. And yet God still comes and he reveals himself. It's humbly right. And it breaks the thing about you that this is by your own good works. So it's the wisdom of God as well. So one of the things that you'll find in this stage here, yeah, you see here, yeah, this here says the rains. The rains here yeah, speaks about the mind. The mind. Now, when I gave my heart to the Lord, I'm, 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 I'm not kidding with this one, right? I'm not kidding with this one. What used to happen is that I'm serving the Lord, but at night, when I'm about to pray, hey, I tell you, now in my past, I swore a lot, right? So, at night, when I'm about to pray, as I pray, hey, I just say, if the name of Jesus, if the name of, and I told it, and it sounds like my voice saying it, literally swearing in my mind, for about an hour. Yo. I went on for like weeks. I think even into months. Imagine. Has that ever happened to anybody? Hey, happened to you? Yes. Yes, hello. Mr. Melinda? No. Anybody else? So imagine that you're doing that. So what I thought was, I blaspheme against the Holy Ghost. I reckon, Lord, I'll go to hell, but I'm still going to try and serve you. <laughs> hey, you missed that. Right. So this is the part where, hey, by myself I'm crying. And my mother comes so o'clock in the morning. Hey, I'm still on my knees there, I'm praying for forgiveness. Hey, Lord. Hey, no mentor, no mentor, no mentor. Hey, no mentor in life. <laughs> so this is the place where your thoughts are, your mind is renewed. So you understand where thoughts come from. So some thoughts, those thoughts are from the devil. So there's your thoughts, there's Satan thoughts, and then this. Those that come from God. So you must begin to discern them. And then obviously renew your mind. So what we've decided to do at this stage of our growth is do what? Is write the entire Bible. Or start writing the Bible. Let me put it like that. Start writing the Bible. Start writing as much as you can. Now remember, in Matthew, in Matthew, in Matthew 6 it says this. It says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things shall be added unto you. That's clothed and all the other stuff, right? The interesting thing there is, Jesus just said seek. 
He didn't say acquire it. He says, when you seek it, then I will supply it. So you might not come to the end of your seeking. You get me? It doesn't mean God is God does supply. And from the word that the Lord gave us in the prayer meeting, uh, prayer meeting yesterday, it's about our beliefs. We've got to believe it. If you don't believe it, it's it's hard for God to materialize such things. Right. So this place, beloved, is where there's also provision. This is the basic provision. You follow me? Basic provision. God provides for you as well. Yeah. Everything's provided. So the Israelites, what did they have? They had manna and quails in this place, and they had water, and they had clothing. You remember? Everything was provided for them. You, you, you'll get me. Then, the interesting thing here, you know, the Bible, what it says, uh, in day number one, the Bible says, and God said, be light. Then it says, and God called the day light, and the night he called darkness. You, you with me? And then here yeah, with the waters and stuff like that, uh, afterwards, he calls the dry land, earth, you remember, and he calls the water seas. Now follow me, all right? Here we can go to our Bible in Genesis chapter 1, because this is where we're coming to now, all right? This is where you're going to come to, which is very, very important that we touched on. So in Genesis 1, 3, it says, God said, be light, and there was light. God saw the light that it was good. He divided the light from darkness. And says God called the light day and the darkness he called night. So follow, follow this right. So God's got a pattern. In creation, the first thing he does is he says. Then the other thing, what happens is that he sees that it's good. And the last thing what happens, he calls it. Now, why does God still call it? You following me? Because he said it, he saw it, and he called it. So that's his pattern. Then, when you go into day number two, it says, um, and God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, all right? He said it there. Then in verse number eight, it says, God called the firmament heaven. You following me? And the evening and the morning of the second day. Then on the third day, God says, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place and let the dry land appear. And he called the dry land earth. And the gathering of the waters he called the seas. All right. So we know Adam, he got into this third phase of his life because we see him in the Garden of Eden by himself, which means he made it in here. Now, beloved, there is no way in the Bible that God called the herb yielding seed and the fruit yielding seed. God only said it. He never called it. Is he supposed to call it? Yes, because that's his pattern. He can't change his pattern. Because he's saying it and he's calling it. He's saying it and he's calling it. When he gets to the third day, he only says it. He doesn't call it. You know why he doesn't call it? Yes, sir. He waited eagerly. You're not like uh, Sunday. Wipe your face first. With tiredness. <laughs> Tell me, sir. You're following what Mr. Maling is saying. What God does, He says, make man in our image after our likeness. So which means, this man that is made can carry out, can carry out the function of the one that created him. Because he is the exact image of God. He's a replica. Exact. So God takes from him, he blows. He says, it's the same substance. You follow me? It's the same essence. Then he says, after our, after our likeness. So there's no difference with man and God at this stage. Yeah. You're following me. So, see the pattern of the revelation. Because when you look in your Bible, you can look later tonight. Do the herbs have names? Do, do the seeds, do the herbs have names? Do seeds have names? Oh, at that time, they never yet have names. God never gave them names. But today, do they have names? You'll show fruits, does. 
You can call a fruit something. Right. Following me. Right. Then, these here, do they have names in the sea? Do they have names? Yes. These here, do they have names? Man, beast, and cave do they have names? Yes. As a matter of fact, who named the woman? God or man? Man. <laughs> huh? Man. The only woman, where's the woman? One, two, three, four, five. Man. Who named? Man. And the Bible says, he called. He called. Now, that word call is the same word used in Genesis 1 3. God called the day or the light day. God called the dry land earth. Now, who's doing the calling? Adam. Where else do we see Adam doing the calling? With all these beasts. Adam called their names. Can you see what's happening? The moment. This image of God is there. What God does, it discontinues, he stops. That's why in your life and in my life, you come to a block, God will do nothing. Because it's the responsibility of mankind to do what? To call. So you would see, as you trace in the Bible, guarantee all three pages here, yeah? The Bible does not stop doing, saying one thing. Thus says the Lord. And the Lord said. Thus says the Lord. But that's all he does. So when God speaks to you a word. He gives you a word, a prophecy. Or he speaks to you personally. Whose job is it to call it? Pastor's job. It's your job to learn the vocabulary of calling things. So when Paul saw this, he says, God calls things that be not as though they are. You follow me, beloved? You got to check me because this, this is what will take us to an unstoppable level. It's the calling. Now, in Christianity, the one time, I came across a guy, right? This guy had this thing, I won't lie to you. He had this calling thing. Uh, and he would call things and they would literally, they would literally come to him. Physical things. He would call them and he would come. You know what is the mistake he made? Now I see it. He did this. He took out his money. All right? And he gave money like this. And he called. So he took money and he put it down, he gave it to someone and he said, this is my seed for what I'm naming. So, there's something called, you'll remember, Michelle sure will remember, name it and claim it. Now there is a revelation in that. But what they did was, they said attach something, put your card down and name it. So name your seed. So when you come to the front with your money, you come, you put your money down, and name a silver grey Toyota Corolla <laughs> 1.6 GT GA GT GA E. Uh, I was too, I wanted to go for Oryx I at the time. But I said no, that's greed. Let me settle for But I put my money and I named it. Yo, I went to the dealership boldly. Came for my silver grey. The auto Corolla, 1.6. <laughs> so we're out of stock on that one. We do have the white one. Yeah, you don't know my God, you guys. So give me some, I went back. I came back again the next day. I said, that's what we told you out of stock. But I said, but Lord, I named it. I put my seat down and I claimed it. Hey, they stopped doing it for a while. Hey, I just like, hey, just go get the car. I went to the dealer. Hey, I'll take the white one. <laughs> You get me? So there was that teaching in Christianity about naming it and claiming. Remember it? So people would run up. It was such a strong teaching. Imagine we're giving this revelation at the end, at the end of it, I say, now so you'll see it. What's going to happen? Hey, people are running up, throwing their money down. They give in, they give in, they give in, they give in. And some of them, some of them, 
They actually got some things. And some of them never did. You know why? Some of them were at that stage where they believed to call it and it manifested something. It was not the sowing of the money that did it. It was the strength of the revelation in their mouth. When they called it, it responded. You get me? So what they would do is, they would say, okay, Stalisha, come give you a testimony. Hey guys, you know, I was on my lost. And when I heard the message, I knew I had to buy the loaf of bread later on because, you know, the aunties, I've got so many children there and there and there. You know, if I gave this money and my husband found out and she would come give a testimony. But when I got home, I'm telling you, somebody just came and knocked and gave us everything that I made. Guess what happens then? Oh, the next crew comes running up and doing the same thing. You, you get me? But there was something in it. The calling in it was right, not the money story. You see how we get the revelation nicely? Your giving is something, this hour of appreciation and, and love towards God, not for any return and not for any gain. You get me, beloved? You're with me. So, guess what, right? So, here is Adam here. Yeah. He's at this level, yeah, right? He's at this level. He's at this level. Now, remember, the Israelites, they went into a land of Canaan. And there was a lot of faith that they had to have to get into the land and battles there to fight to get into it. You get me, beloved? So in Adam's life, what God does when he puts him in the Garden of Eden, right? There are certain things he must learn. He's got a fivefold function he must learn. One of them is how to serve. You get me? So when you look at his fivefold function, it relates directly to the prophets, apostles, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Exactly, that's Adam's function. He has to function in all those giftings that the Lord had put into him. Now, when you see him naming like the animals, which one of those five do you think he's operating in? The prophets. The prophets, yes, because he's calling it. So you'd find now in the New Testament, you know what, um, you know what Paul said? He says, the first thing you must desire out of all the gifts is which gift? Prophecy. prophecy. You know why? Because prophecy is the one that you do what? You call it. It says, don't worry about he leads this, that, that. Focus on the first one where you can call it and call things into being. Because this, I'm telling you, you can heal a million people. And you can't call, you broke. You, you know what I'm saying? There's a basic provision. But in terms of advancing the kingdom of God, you can't. Because you lack the ability to call things. So Paul says to the church, Beloved, desire what? Prophecy. Go after prophecy. The first thing you must learn is to prophesy. Because you must call it. That's why in the life of Adam, one of the first functions God does for him is he brings the animals to him. And he operates it. So, when Adam unlocks that thing with regard to a prophet, you'll find in the Old Testament that right from the Old Testament, because Adam unlocked it, the thing about a prophet, everybody else can function in that role as a prophet. But are there any apostles in the Old Testament, nothing. Evangelists, nothing. Because nobody unlocked it. So when Jesus comes, what does he do? He unlocks all five because he walks in them and he gives them that to the body. And now the body of Christ can walk in all five because Jesus unlocks. You're following, beloved. You get it. All right. So at this place here, yeah, that's where Adam must be developed. So for the men, listen to me, men, young men. What happens here is the first one here, the second one, and the third one, right? Man's function is on the earth, correct? Can you see that? His function is only on the earth. And one of Adam's roles was he was to serve. The Bible says, till the ground. Serve, the, it means to serve the ground. So, this man, one of his first functions that he has to do in your function, you want to learn to serve. Get me? In the earth. You follow me, beloved? 
but specifically here in the Garden of Eden. Now listen to this. The Bible, when it speaks about like the earth, the sea, the sun, the moon, and the stars, and everything else, it always relates to like male and female. You following me? So, is the earth male or female? Fabian, you're not going to answer this. Is the earth male or female? Is the earth male or female? The earth is female. It's her. It's always referred to as a her. Yeah. So hence, listen to me. That is why the important thing about serving for men, a man that can serve is because he learns, he learns, he learns how to, how to sort of, what's the word to use? How to deal with or how to serve properly with you in the light of like female relationships. When he does that, because Adam does serve a bit there, right? When he does that, guess what God does? Then God now brings who? He brings the feminine part of that, the resemblance of, of that directly to him. Who's who? Who is who? His partner, Eve. You get me? So after he's learned to serve, after he's learned to call a thing, now when we, our, our, our beloved, when we got married, when we got married, we don't know about calling. And so if you marry without the revelation, guess what happens? The marriage can't advance in the light of God. That's why marriages always struggle. Because both, part, uh, both parties are not yet at this stage here of their life. And so what happens? It becomes a trial, a trial and error until both parties get the revelation. So unfortunately, there's nothing that a person can do. There's no counseling that can help a person. There's nothing that a person can do because a person must get into this sort of like growth stage of their life. You with me? Now Jesus, when he's doing it, when he's talking about the kingdom of heaven, there's seven parables that he talks about here in the bottom. You can see this one here, the parable of the mustard seed. It ties in perfectly with the herb yielding seed, the fruit, etc., etc. that goes. Can you see that, beloved? With the spirit of might and everything that goes on here. Can you see that? Remember what we said about temperance? What's our definition of temperance? Can you remember? Carbo. Guys, Sister Kimo, we did not have all this at the revelation. And we came up with these definitions, man. Oh, get excited, your day, man. Remember, when you first said, Master your words, you're like, What's wrong with this? This always says strange things. Like Paul says, hey, this pastor, I don't know where he gets information from. I'm worried about But Paul said he's worried about me. Even when he came the first time, he said, like, I can't come here. I'm worried about this man here. The things he's talking about. When you got no spiritual father. <laughs> yeah. He says, you see, that's what happened. You got no spiritual father. You get me, beloved? So you see that it's mastery of words. Here we go. It's all in here. Now then, it's the calling part, right? So this is the part, day three, that we're going to focus a lot on, right? We're going to focus a lot on, not in teaching, but because this is practical. But if you dare try to call something here, yeah, and you haven't been through this stage and this stage, guess what? You will be like the sons of Sceva. You know the sons of Sceva? Yes. There were seven sons. Their father was the chief priest, the high priest. All right, and so there was a demon case, and so they went to do some calling there. The Bible says that the demon stripped them naked. Imagine in church, oh Lord have mercy. <laughs> Imagine being stripped naked there in church. Demons beat you up. <laughs> Pastor's running up there, oh Lord have mercy. No, 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 no. What an eyeball, all right. So you'll find here, yeah, you see that's why, even in this stage, in the second stage of growth, it speaks about the lava, which is a bowl. It's like a cleansing bowl that's there with water in it. Because this is where the mind gets renewed. You always need to be washed. Hello, don't be, don't be upset. You know, when the Lord's highlighting things in your life and getting you to feel, don't worry about all this stuff. We grow in here, right? So when you come here, you see this part, yeah? So Adam, obviously, you know Adam, he has some level of progression here. Yeah? Because he qualifies for the lady to come. 
Now, listen. This man, Adam, he cannot get out of this garden, the garden of Eden, unless, because here, yeah, him himself is incomplete. He's one version of himself, right? So the Bible there, yeah, see the terminology that the, that the Bible says. Now I'm writing the book of Genesis again. When I'm writing, I'm changing the words. I'm not using some of the words that it's using there. Because some of the words it's using there doesn't sort of like help the purpose. So this is what the Bible says about Adam, right? It is, and the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. You following me? Now, in 20, it says, and Adam gave names, or rather, that, see the Bible says gave names. Adam called names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found and help meet for him. So what the Bible saying there, there was not found, let me get it dry, uh, a surrounding protection that could be in the front of him. Because that's what those words mean. Can a surrounding protection that could be his front, that must go before him. Strange, right, Ken? You know who they're talking about? You know who they're talking about? Woman. Oh, check Shade. I wish I could take a photo. <laughs> check how she's blushing. Oh, wow, oh, what's her name? You know, slow, slow. <laughs> <laughs> right, so listen now, right. And I'll tell you why, because when you look at day number four, day number four, yeah, right? When the Bible speaks about counsel, when the Bible speaks about understanding, when the Bible speaks about wisdom. Which one of these are male and which one of these are female? You'll know? Hey? Eh? You say? Counsel is female. Understanding is? Male. Wisdom is? Mr. Malinga? All three are female. Hey, you know, from you, you've been humble here, right? Uh, as, as humble as you try to be, but you know. So all these three, beloved, you see all these three, all these three, yeah. All these three are female. Here is the power, Ken. Here is the power of the female. Is that without the female, a man can never reign in this part of life. He can only reign up until day number three. You say, what, but, but, but why do you say that, Pastor? Back it up. My dear friends, the Lord Jesus Christ, our master and our savior, him himself, he only goes up until this day here, and then he dies for us. You know what he does? And then, the last thousand years of the earth, he comes back. But when he comes back, the moment he comes back, the Bible says, and he will rule with an iron rod. Who does he come back with? He's coming back with a woman. Can you see? Which means Jesus cannot do anything. He cannot go past this stage yet. Without who? The female. So, now, this is where the lady's life becomes interesting. Because he's not just a female as in a female. You follow me? When Jesus comes back, you ladies, you all know this. One of the things when a person gets married, what is the one thing that uh, sort of makes, okay, it's changed today, it's changed, but it was like this before. The lady's outfit is the, is the center of everything, correct? Is the decor of the whole better? Is the guy's tax? What is the one thing that stands out at a wedding? What is the main thing? The gown, right? So imagine, imagine, woman, you all know this, eh, ladies, if the gown had some stains on it. Which, which, which lady will wear that? If it has one, one, one spot in it, Lisa, you wear it? 
You never? Yeah. Gemma, you wear it, Gemma? Come on, you wear it. Mish, you wear it, Mish? Never. Once for like, you make. Hey, the wedding will start what time? The wedding will start until that speck is off. Is that true? So, which means, ladies, and that's why, you know, maidens, maidens of the Lord, even at a wedding, you'll find that a father hands over a daughter. Because it is a father that should have brought her, you know what I'm saying? Should have prepared her daughter. You follow with me? So, the woman then, they have such an important role to play. Is that the one thing that they wait for the entire life, help me out, because I don't know this yet, all right? Is, is, is like a wedding the biggest day of your lives? I don't know. Lisha, biggest day it will be. Tamir, biggest day? No. Think so, come on. And now we. No? <laughs> I'm not saying anything there, right? So it is. In the whole of creation, what God's doing. You know, Jesus has. A set day, a marriage. Imagine Jesus has a marriage day. Jesus has a marriage day. So then, it speaks to something about the woman. That the woman needs to be prepared in some way, which uh, for the time being, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is and I don't know how it must be groomed to take this place with the man. You get me? Because the one thing you find that and you'll probably get more revelation from the church and how the church is. Yeah, no, no, no. Won't be difficult to show that because the way the church is groomed, the same way uh, a woman should be groomed, you know, from young days. So, in this space here, yeah, a man that rejects a woman's voice, that man, we call him a goat. <laughs> hey? He is a goat. A goat, he's a goat. Goat nation. Any man. What, what is that? Yeah, any man that rejects a woman's voice. Look in the ministry, right? Look right here in the ministry. If we take away a woman's voice in the ministry, we are. You know what I'm saying? It's. How can you take, take away a woman's voice? What, I mean, what do we have? Most of the time, with a man and a woman, no matter how spiritual a man is, a woman can discern. You with me? A woman can discern. Now, you would know from, in day four, yeah, with regard to the sun, moon, and the stars, what is their purpose? Their purpose, yeah, is for? Yes, times, seasons. So, it involves discernment. That is why, with a man and a woman, a woman can come, come to a man and tell the man, Hey, Papa, listen, Mr. Man, I can see some things here. Can a woman do that? Yeah. Come on. You know a man, let me give you an example, right? A man can go and eat lunch or supper with his, with his woman, and he don't even know that when the waitress comes, he, he himself, he don't know that it's relative. True, man. No, I'm being honest with you. The men, the men don't even know they're putting themselves in trouble. I'm telling you, guys. Listen, Shade, I'm telling you. I'm giving you something. There are some, they, there are some that maybe their conscience is here. Right, that's a different story. But there are some and they don't know. I'm being honest. And you'll find that a good woman will say, listen, Mr. Man, I'm going to let you know. You don't know it, but you're flirting with this man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even Trey, Chick Trey, Trey's alive now. <laughs> this subject became alive. That just now he was head down and all that. I'm telling you. <laughs> Pasta. I'm telling you guys, listen, this is something that happens. You'll see it. The guy is in love 
a honeymoon, on his honeymoon, you'll be flirting there with the waitress. <laughs> not intentional, not intentional. Not intentional, it's just... So, a man will go into business, right? I've got this great business idea. Going to business. To him, he's gonna be the next billionaire. It's a stupid idea. It's, it's a goat idea. The lady says to you, don't shall we call him? He says, hey, but in a nice way, yeah, I don't think this is gonna work. And the lady can see. Can... Now I'm talking about myself. I'm trying to know how many businesses, all of them, they had good and they had bad. But the wife was always, I remember her voice. But you know what she did? Good woman. She says, leave him. The Lord said to her, leave him. Let, the, let this goat <laughs> pat his head several times. Boom. This one, boom. Come on, embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> and the lights get cut, boom. <laughs> hey, what's going on? Embarrassed. I'm telling you. So, a man will do himself a favor and, you know, listen to the discernment of a woman. In our life, in my life and Deborah's life, listen, I spend more time in the Bible than Deborah. There's no way. Beloved, there's no way. I know that there's no way. I'm here, day and night I'm in the Bible. One year and a half, and after that time, I still make a bad decision. And she tells me, no, it's not a good idea. But I do it. I say, no, I'm in the Bible, yeah? <laughs> you say, you're not in the Bible. But she knows more. With dreams, she puts dreams together faster than me. But I'm in the Bible. Faster. Everything with discernment, she beats me. There was a guy, his name is John G. Lake. Um, you know this guy? This guy, the city where he lived in was called the healthiest city in yesterday. Yesterday, it's you that I can hear it. That's the worst one, eh? Because we saw you only moving around with that. <laughs> Anyways. So the city was called the healthiest city in the world. Yet, there were people that he prayed for that never get healed. And the wife was just sitting there relaxing. The wife knew exactly why they weren't getting healed. You know what the man did eventually? He would pray for them, no healing. He would say, please go see my wife. <laughs> but the wife would come and tell him, hey, so and so, hey, John, this is why this person never can hear one, two. He couldn't see it. Because naturally, the women have more discernment. So, in order for Adam to go out of the garden, in order for him to go out of the garden, there was this counsel, the spirit of counsel that he needed. That is why, You'll find that some angels, to those that see in, 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 in the realm of the spirit, don't they look female? Some of them look like when you see them like, what this woman's doing here? And so, you know, it's a female. When I had this uh, encounter with the Lord, when I saw the demon, in Jesus' name, Jesus, nothing happened. I turned and I walked away. And I saw this lady. And I knew it was an angel. I said, hey, what's up here with this demon? I said, his name never go. Then she said, come, I'll show you. And then the woman opened up counsel to me. A female angel opened up counsel and revealed the name of that demon for me to call it. When I called the name, it disappeared. Poof. Out of sight. It shrank out of sight. You following me? So, on this part here, beloved, this part here, man, they ain't going no further. They ain't going no further. You see, yeah, in this land there, yeah, this land is called, I don't know if you can see it, it's called Havelia, right? The land is called Havelia. You know what the Bible says is in here? You know what the Bible says is in here? It says precious stones, gold on next stone, because that's what happens when you find your wealth. That's why the woman's called wealth. In our life, I would, I, I would lie to you. I can talk all I want to, but I know. I know how the Lord has done this thing. And it's not the crash, not the hey, hey, it's not the crash, don't count the numbers and all that. It's not that. But the way the Lord worked it is that the spirit of wisdom approached us and said some things, you get me? Ministered some things, and, but not to me. 
I'm like, but no, this is, you know, you've, this is my, you know, this is the one. I'm laboring here. So, that's just the way it works, right? So you'll find that India is where all the wealth is. This is above lands and stuff like that. This is serious stuff, right? Then power over nations and rule with iron rod is where together, listen to me, together, together, you'll give counsel to nations. All right? So you'll see here yeah, that this long suffering is also called what? Patience, right? You'll know that? Patience is a male or female? Female. You follow me in this thing, but look at the chart. Can you see how it ties in? Then this here is the parable of the leaven. You know what this parable says? A woman. A woman hid it in three measures. A woman! So this whole thing here is got to do with, yes, feminine, the wealth and the strength of the woman. Can you see that, beloved? This is it. This is it. So at this stage here, we are only in the place where, as a man, you still need to find that avenue. Getting me? And this is now where we begin to operate. Now, we don't want to go too much into these here. We don't want to go too much into these because the Lord hasn't opened much of all the stuff on. But the place that we need to focus on is guess where? What's the place that we need to be prepared for? Anybody can, out of all of those, right? So currently, you guys, you and me, we are all here, right? Now, understand, I'm being like Moses. You know me, I had my holiness journey, Mr. Malinga. You remember? I had my journey. Moses too, he had his wilderness journey. But because he was leading people, guess what? He had to go through the gate of the people. You know that thing you want to be more a leader? So you guys, listen. When you guys have done all of this, because I personalized the Bible, right? Not all the books, most of the books. So I've done it. But that's in my wilderness experience. But now when I'm leading the people, I've got to put myself where? Back in the wilderness. So guess what? Yeah, you are. You're thinking, hey, you know, I'm just going to complete this Bible now. I'm going to write and finish it. It's just thinking, oh, when you have your soldiers and your soldiers start writing, what are you going to be doing? Chilling? Relaxing? You've got to, as a leader, you've got to go into the game. You've got to go into the game. And this is the pattern, beloved. You see how the Lord's promise of this building this army is going to do it. Can you see that? Now, when I do this, beloved, listen to me. There is personalizing the Bible and writing the Bible. Writing the Bible is the best. This entire book, we all know it. We know where to put every single thing in. What will happen, Brother Paul, is this. As you read it, just a mission. It's like you fill in a container, which is a spirit. At first, you don't feel much because it's raining your toenails there, the word of God, you know? Then it's going on your heels there. So you don't feel it much. And it starts rising, rising, rising. Until it gets to this place here, it starts bubbling up, bubbling up. Eventually, it gets up until here and it comes out of you. Now there is one person in the Bible that it was impossible for him to be silent. Who was that? Hey? Yeah. What did he say? Yes. It's going. It's in there. So you don't have a choice. The calling is like just an automation. Yeah, beautiful. Which means you don't have to strive to call something. It's automatic because what's happening is that your spirit has been filled up. Layers are filling up. Taking his time. As the brother said, don't rush. Take your time. But it's going to get to that point, sister. You know, whether you like it or not, you will just call it. Excuse me. It's like things with, uh, with regard to healing and stuff like that. I should be loved to come to church. In the pews, you'll be there. People will be there that have done it. There'll be a sick person next to you. Be like, hey, in the name of Jesus, blah, 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 finish. No, even coming to the front. It's like nothing, you know. 
We're just kidding on and me. It'll be normal. Not this way, yeah, where somebody comes and then you take that person's healing and you advertise it to the whole world. Hey, fullness of Jesus, this miracle. No, we're not doing that. We're not advertising miracles and healings. <laughs> yeah, hey. Shh. Yeah. You get me? You with me, beloved? Now, you will notice this. You will notice this. That most of the messages, they always come back to one thing. And what is that for now? Yes. But to say, for me to say, hey, meditate. Imagine I come here. Guys, you know, you know meditation is powerful. You must meditate, huh? Hey, med no. There is not enough weight that I'm giving you. Yeah, I need to convince you that this thing is real. We need to open up the treasures of heaven, open up the revelation so you can see it. And so when you see it, you go home straight away. You're like, hey, Papa, what you doing? No, 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 I'm writing. I'm writing. I'm writing. Hey, no, 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 leave me. I'm writing. I'm writing. Like a madman, you're writing, you're writing, you're writing. And the Lord's filling it up. And when you come back again on Sunday, there is greater motivation. And then on the service, what do you do, Pastor? Right. Right. Everything leads to it. But you can't just say those words. It's like before, I used to minister. Hey, Jesus loves you. Jesus really loves you. But there's no power and no substance in the words. You get me? And so what the Lord does is that he opens up. He opens up uh, like insights into who he is. To motivate us to get that part on the way. To get that part done. You get me? Then as you write in, the Lord just comes and visits you. The Spirit starts rumbling. More motivation. More motivation. You get me? Because that's the part that the Lord must fulfill. It's standard. When He fulfills that, I assure you, the city that He promised is ours. There is, there is no way in a million years. Once you begin to call things, you call it. And it's yesterday. I, but the one thing I'm not doing is I'm not calling you a, a new Hawaii phone and stuff like that to help you. No, 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 we're not doing that, right? You and me, beloved. So, this thing must gear up. It must build up. It must saturate. It must saturate. It must, it must digest in every part of our being. You with me? Inside, inside. Well, there's Fabian, right? So I say this openly because we know we're in the community. And I, I've never ever asked him about like the habits. Remember the habits that you had? And one two times you could say like the brother come to church, you know what I'm saying? But he said, you leave it to the Lord. Now, by his own admission, he starts opening up and say this. And do and say that. Now, we put pressure on him, no way. There's no need to put pressure on anybody about anything. The word of God has got enough power and enough motivation in it to convince us. Not the echoing of a person's voice. Stop this. Stop that. No. That is not, that is not Christianity. Hey. Say again. Yeah. Yeah. So the word will do its thing. The word will do its motivation. So what we must learn here, yeah, we must learn about this thing, which is our mouth. Because the flip side of everything, when your mouth becomes so powerful, the flip side is you can say things that can be damaging, that can be hurtful. We're not talking about, about others, we're talking about to ourselves. To ourselves. Imagine you're at the stage where you can speak like this and you say something bad about yourself. Ah, oh, me. You know, this is for everybody else. It's not for me. Eh? You get me? And we can do it. Then, we can say other things like general conversation. We can speak. This general conversation, not realizing that the words that we've spoken carry so much weight. And they can hurt, they can kill, they can pierce, they can damage. 
You follow me? So then the mouth becomes such and, and the tongue becomes so important because this is like dictating our life and the parts that we tell. There's no place to be saying about this. Hey, you know me, I'll never amount to anything. I'm just generalizing. Because your words now are piercing. Boo. They begin to pierce, your, uh, pierce yourself. So as much on the other side, there is this great beautiful thing that God, that God is doing. But there's the other part of it. Where you get to a place like our dear patriarch Moses. Because Moses, his words are so powerful at the stage that he's there. He can't make one wrong move. You know what happens when Moses makes one wrong move? Guess what? Hey? Hey, God comes and says, This guy is going to damage people with his mouth. You know what God said to Moses? God said, Moses, now listen, Moses was 40 years in the wilderness. How many years was he in, in the wilderness with the Egyptians? 40 plus years with them as well. All right? After 80 plus years, the people were complaining and murmuring. And Moses said this, you rebels. He called something that you're not supposed to call. He called it. You know what God said? Hey, da, 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 da. Moses, you're coming home. Because you're entering, you're entering a place that your mouth will damage others. And it meant his death. It meant that he never even journeyed into the promised land. Did you see that? All because of what? His mouth and what he said. Were the people rebellious? Yes, they were rebellious. Whose people are they? Is it his right to call God's people rebels? What does God call them? The apple of my eye. Moses decides he can call them rebels. Can you see what's happening, beloved? As much as the revelation is flowing, but it's like we beginning to tread on this. Then they are. So for now, you, don't, you know, when you're in the wilderness, Ah, uh, you, 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 you trade it, so you're not gonna die there, <laughs> right? Now, don't have this. I said, hey, you know what? Hey, me, I'm pity in the world in this year. At least I won't die, you get me? It's not like that. So, understand where we're going because it's we're going to a place of we're going to a place of what, what could be called like no return. The place that Jesus says, hey, you sold up everything for me. You say one wrong thing. It's over. Moses is spending 40 days and 40 nights on the mountain. Man got no bread or no water. He's surviving. And when he's coming down, he's not coming down like how we fast. So when we fast, come down weak. He's not thin. The man is carrying tablets of stone. After a 40 day fast, you can't, you can't carry a brick after your 40 day fast. Even a bread too heavy for you to put in your mouth. <laughs> you, know, yeah. you, you get me? And so he had this he had this connection with God it's Moses that wrote the first five books of the Bible Moses wrote it he saw the glory of God you with me? and he wrote the same Moses that did all of that the moment his town went on the other side it was right so that's that's it for tonight What's our time? How's our time? Yeah, no, that's... No, no, no we don't care about no, no. You, 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 you can have some coffee and stuff. Let's close in prayer. You're good with that? Father, we bless you. We receive your counsel. We receive your revelation. We receive your word in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.